Concord is a game. Well, it was a game anyway for about two weeks until Sony decided to pull the plug on the whole thing because nobody was playing it. Like, literally 200 people were playing a game that cost $200 million to make. It's no wonder they pulled the plug. Of course, that also had a lot to do with the fact that the game was about eight years too late for an already monopolized genre. And, of course, also had a lot to do with the fact that the game was dressed up in TQ Plus colors. Every character was basically every shade of force diversity right up to and including just a fat guy and a female space marine with ugly colored lipstick that kind of thing and all of them even the robot of course had preferred pronouns something that has basically been proven to be gamer repellent these days as we lead the charge on being utterly sick of delusional activists but speaking of delusional activists the lead concept designer for this game has had another meltdown in a series of leaked deleted tweets is she freaked out because her crappy work helped to bring the game down or is she just bleating about the mental and fragile emotional frustrations of having your work be catastrophically unfit for purpose to such an extent that the whole thing is probably going to get really 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 degraded and sold soon well what do you think Hello, welcome back to Will of the Fans. My name is Will. See what I did there. Hope you're having a lovely, lovely day. We're going to check out an article from SmashJT.com, my good friend and erstwhile compatriots of Saturday Night Hypnosis. Also under attack by black uh, girl gamers at the moment. So I almost said Black Baby Inc. then. I swear I almost did. So do support him at his website and on his YouTube channel when you get a chance. And of course, don't forget to also like this video if you're enjoying it, as well as subscribing to the channel if you'd like more news, reviews, commentary, and rebellion. Courtesy of me and the Griff Force. Alrighty then, we are going straight over to SmashJT.com for this. Leaked Concord Dev message. We're going through an extremely difficult time. Oh no. It is, of course, when one of those things where they act like they're addressing the issue that their work was really bad that it was terribly well received and maybe they should have a little accountability for that but uh, no instead what they do is they just go oh it's so hard oh, the industry is so mean yeah you'll get no sympathy from me love the toxic culture at firewalk studios continues to unravel as another woke employee amanda kiefer is it Kiefer? I mean, it was with Sutherland, so I guess I'll go with that. Senior concept artist had some protected tweets leaked out. Oh, no. You can already tell from this woman who has green hair, bright red lipstick, and an incredibly pale complexion and doesn't smile in photos that she's a bit mental. I mean... It's what everybody tries to look like now. Somehow you're not pulling off Fina from Grandia. You're more pulling off Joker. Not something to aspire to. Uh, Smash also previously covered Amanda Keith. That's right. He made a video about her a while ago uh, on, on her online handle at Imagine Amanda on X. Now in protected mode. But here's a quick TLDR anyway. She does not like gamers. While in undeniably talented in her craft, Kiefer has developed a reputation for vehemently attacking those who criticize upcoming games, such as the Silent Hill remake. You know, the Silent Hill 2 remake, the one that took the character of Angela and made her look more mannish and ugly and fat and eyes pushed together like Dudley Dursley. And has even gone so far as to label dissenters as malicious. It's not malice. It's lethargy apathy weariness all those things more interested in oh right her online persona paints a picture of a professional more interested uh, interested in defending her ideologies than fostering an inclusive and welcome gaming community well that's the big problem isn't it this is what happens all the time. These people, they come into the industry, they think, oh, I used to play video games when I was a kid, that would be quite interesting, but on the way, they have to go through university. And on the way, they get read a whole bunch of Foucault and Derrida and McLuhan, and they end up Marxists. So by the time they get out, they end up being positioned as activists who care more about trying to make the world a better place through forced diversity and the removal of white people and straight people and men and traditional families and you know the right of children to be born and things like that than they do about actually making video games and as a result everything falls to well shit frankly 
Before a whistleblower reached out to Smash JT with insider information about the disaster internally at Firewalk Studios, Amanda had already preemptively blocked him on Twitter. Well, of course she had. I mean, Alyssa McCante blocked me before I ever even heard of her. And, uh, and that was before she started attacking Smash JT as well. This suggested a desire to silence critics and try to best maintain her control over the narrative surrounding her and Firework. Walk. Firewalk. Firewalk. It was a telling sign of the defensive and insular culture that had permeated the studio. Firewalk is knee-deep in a toxic environment characterized by the extreme political correctness. I can never say that. Political correctness. And a left-leaning agenda that stifles diverse viewpoints. Employees like Amanda Kiefer. Amanda Kiefer. I almost read that as a mandala now. God, the opposite is happening. Uh, promoting a cult that prioritized ideological conformity over creative freedom. The whole situation was reminiscent of previous reports involving other industry figures such as Lisa Brown, who allegedly blacklisted employees for not adhering to her preferred titles, we're going to assume pronouns, further contributing to the hostile workplace atmosphere. While Amanda is undoubtedly skilled with some of her art designs outside of the game, their approach to handling any criticism has been anything but that. Focus on including certain progressive elements such as diverse body types and pronouns in Concord appears less about genuine inclusion and more about virtue signaling. Well, he's absolutely right there, isn't he? I mean, let's be honest, it's pretty damned obvious that everything about this is a virtue signal. You think that you are automatically a racist because some crazed body said so and unable to stand up for yourself and formulate a compelling enough argument for why you do not feel that you are a racist especially when the terminology has been changed right before your eyes you fall on your knees bend them both and start sucking up to the dei mandates acting like such a good little virtue puppet look at me i'm so diverse i'm so such an ally for trans people yes 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 we hear you but we know that you are completely fake we do not care what you think because you have sacrificed your humanity for fake virtue arguing that they distract from the core gaming experience yes well they do they literally do all these things do detract from the uh, gaming experience. In a leaked message from Amanda, she expresses frustration with the criticism aimed at her and her team, saying the situation has taken a severe emotional toll on them. This is how they do it. They go, Oh, it's been really bad having my work called out for being hack amateur crap and my company that I work for losing millions and millions and millions of dollars because we prioritized political 21st century contemporary postmodern politics rather than making a timeless entertaining multiplayer video game for people to have fun with and lose themselves in. Yeah, that, that, all that backlash, that completely deserved backlash that we're receiving, yeah, it's taken a real emotional toll on me. Feel sorry for me. Please feel so sorry for me. Don't focus on the actual things that, that went wrong or that I did wrong or the horrible, vile things that I've said potentially on my Twitter thread. Please, please feel sorry for me. Please feel sorry for me. Why won't you feel sorry for me? Maybe it's because you're a hack-ass bitch. Executive decisions and hints at the dire financial consequences faced by the art department have also hurt hurt her, yet her statement misses the point entirely. While it's understandable that the closure of a project can be emotionally and financially devastating for those involved, like for example when the uh, journo rats at Kotaku and Second Wind decided to take aim at Smash JT's website and take it down, or when Black Girl Gamers decided to copyright strike his YouTube channel the other day for criticizing them. Ah, oh, it's funny, isn't it? You understand now that it could be emotionally and financially devastating for those involved. Hmm. Gamers are under no obligation to feel sympathy for developers when their products fail to meet their expectations. Yeah, that's true. That's market forces. Supply and demand. If there's no demand for what you are supplying, then no one will buy it. And there was no demand for Concord. Nobody needed it. We already have Overwatch. Overwatch is already pretty much the best at what it is, and people have already decided that that is not for them. If it wasn't, 
in the first place. Receiving a full, a poorly made burger at a restaurant is a good analogy, and being expected to sympathise with the cook for trying their best. Well, that just doesn't work, does it? Especially when you've got DEI being shoved into the culture. It's effectively like getting a burger that gives you food poisoning, and then being expected to sympathise with the chef who poisoned you for trying their best. No, fire their ass and get somebody who actually wants to make good burgers and actually cares. So there you go. There is absolutely no sympathy to be had here for Amanda Kiefer. You can go and check out this article at smashjt.com if you would like to see a little bit more of it. But of course, don't forget to let me know how you feel about this video in the comment section down below. And of course, ah, boy, I am exhausted. Like the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to Will of the Fans if you'd like to see more of me. I'd like to see more of you. I'll be back with another video for you very, very soon. But until then, remember to question everything. Respect the fans. Check out the Discord link below and I'll chat to you next time.